It's a late afternoon at the Yahoo Finance office. I'm in a meeting of six to seven people. And as a group, we're here to discuss an upcoming event to Washington, D.C. But I'm focused on who is incessantly emailing my boss behind my back that I'm missing my video publishing deadlines. Because he or she doing that is a real pain in my neck and making me look bad. I look around. Everyone looks bored. Is it Iggy? Is it Tom? Is it Matt? Is it Julia? Francesca? Olivia? Jonathan? I yawn. I click my pen. I sip my coffee. This is the third time we've had this meeting in two weeks. Everyone looks disinterested. I click my pen. I yawn. I get up and get more coffee. The meeting lasts another hour. But by the end, I have a hunch on who is going behind my back and emailing my boss incessantly about me missing deadlines. When the meeting wraps up, I ask if we can do a quick breakout meeting with just Francesca and my boss. We hop in a small room and continue to discuss. By the end of that meeting, I'm now confident I know who is reporting me behind my back. Francesca leaves, and I turn to my boss and ask, what can I say to Julia to make her feel like I'm not missing video deadlines on purpose? He says, oh, I'm glad Julia talked to you about that. Yes, I lie, but he gave me the confirmation I needed that it was indeed Julia. The question is, how did I know it was Julia? It's because I yawned. You see, yawning is part of our autonomic central nervous system. It's things we do unconsciously. Whether it's our heart beating, coughing, blinking, yawning, all these things are subconscious. We don't really have control over them. Except yawning is known to be contagious. Other people will mimic our yawns subconsciously. And scientists believe that yawning, while contagious, is linked to social empathy. Sources down in the bio. But we all intrinsically know this to be true. When our parents or our significant other yawn, we almost instinctively and immediately yawn back with them. And this can be played out across other people we know, whether it's close friends or a work setting where we've known these people a long time. And I was yawning like clockwork. Every three to five minutes, I would yawn and then watch it move like a wave around the meeting. And I had been doing this for weeks, observing who yawned and who didn't. The only two people not yawning were Julia sitting next to me and Francesca sitting kitty corner across the table. Now, I wasn't sure if Francesca was simply not yawning because she wasn't alert to the fact that I was yawning. So I quickly asked to get in a breakout room with her and my boss alone. And as soon as we got in the room, I yawned and she yawned right back with me, which told me that she, she has empathy towards me. She likes me at least. The only person not yawning was Julia. And by power of deduction, I felt she doesn't like me. Of all these people, the most likely individual to go behind my back, Julia. She's the only one not yawning when I yawn. So how can you use this autonomic tell in your own life? Well, there's a few ways. Among coworkers that you go back with a year, two years, you can observe who yawns with whom, whether they yawn with you or other people, and can give you an insight, a social cue into their person. Another one is parties. You're out late with the boys. If everybody's yawning and one isn't yawning, it may indicate they lack some social empathy your other friends don't. Now, alcohol can throw a wrench in this all, so you can't rely on it just one time. It needs to be observed over multiple occasions and taken into consideration with other data points. But yawning can be a very useful social cue to give you a read on people's social empathy towards others and towards yourself. Another classic that I use all the time is at cocktail parties, the galas or the house parties. After a few hours, if the wife yawns and the husband doesn't react or vice versa, it gives a strong social cue that something is amiss in that interpersonal relationship. Whether you choose to exploit that information is up to you. But you can also be generous and go up to the individual if the wife leaves to go do something else or the husband leaves to go get another glass of wine and insert yourself in the conversation offering social empathy. They might respond very positively to you. Yawning as a proxy for social empathy can be a great tool for discovering people that maybe have a little less empathy towards others or lack empathy in general. But yawning isn't the only one that can be an interesting tell. Coughing is another autonomic response that can be very revealing. In sex, nobody coughs. You can even run this experiment, or maybe have. You can be sick as a dog, flu for three, four days, coughing, phlegm everywhere. But if you find yourself having coitus, it'll disappear. It's because arousal and adrenaline suppress the autonomic response of coughing. It'll disappear entirely. 
You may have a coughing fit as soon as you finished having coitus, but during the making love, there won't be any coughing. You may have even noticed this idiosyncratic bodily response if you've lived long enough or reflected back on certain occasions in your life. So if you're making love, having coitus, having sex, and someone coughs, they're not into it. They're humoring you. I'll leave it up to you to figure out the reasons why they're choosing to humor you in that moment. But coughing during sex is a dead giveaway. That person is faking their arousal. So there you go. That is one simple trick I have used as a journalist over a decade to suss out sociopathic behavior or people that are moving against me. It can be a useful social cue combined with other data points. This is not a hard science I want to emphasize to better understand the people you're reacting with. And hopefully you enjoyed the fun fact about coughing as well. If you like this video, leave a like. If you dislike this video, leave a like, leave a comment, share it. Hopefully you found it interesting, boost the algorithm. Helps me make more very bizarre, unique videos like this. If you, there's a motto I live by. Little goes unnoticed, most goes unsaid. Please subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye. I don't need a stamp and I walk out that door My mistake, giving you love, girl, Lord Hope you find someone that can really adore you Don't worry, I ain't keeping grudges Cause I'm doing better, life cannot be more golden But honestly, I won't